afternoon my little pretties while I was doing the uh, on foot tour where we was at the Brunel Tunnel vent shafts I said oh there's another church in the distance and there's another one over there as well which I shall have to find and locate <laughs> there's the London is I'm spoilt for churches and the good thing is I love churches this is going on my London loop page but it's also going on the family history page because um, this is St Paul's at Shadwell the history is over here so we will get that and when it's open it will make a fairly interesting churchyard live as well because unlike a lot of the London churches this one hasn't had all its gravestones put to the side so if I can get into this it may turn into a churchyard life this is St Paul's at Shadwell with St James Ratcliffe which may be that one over there uh, traditionally known as the Church of the Sea Captains history 15, 1656 built as the Chapel of Ease 1669 rebuilt as the Parish Church of Shadwell the last of five London churches built during the Restoration 1820 rebuilt as a Waterloo Church architect John Walters here, Captain James Cook was an active parishioner. Captain James Cook married at um, St Margaret's Barkin. So that's another interesting one as well, and I've done that church. John Wesley preached on various occasions. Here were baptised Jane Randolph, mother of Thomas Jefferson. Oh wow, President of the USA, uh, 1720. James Cook, eldest son of Jack Captain James Cook. 1763, Walter Patter, writer and critic, 1835, William Perkin, discoverer of synthetic dye stuffs, 1838. So that's interesting. But um, yeah, back to where I go. For the my, my link to this is what I absolutely love. A couple of my ancestors, Edward Popkiss and his wife, Mary Ann, whose maiden name was Kite. He was a customs house officer, both born in Kent. Um, and then they made, for some reason, we don't know why they moved from Kent to London, but be between 1841 and 1851, they moved from Kent to Shadwell in London. While they were here, they weren't, didn't have any children baptized here. They didn't get buried here or have their as far as I know, it could have possibly had Edward's funeral here, but we don't know that. But yeah, uh, but they, this was the parish church they would have, would have worshipped in. Um, we do know that because when I was doing the well, that line of the family history in London the research, Bancroft Road Ar Archives, they've got all the parish books and everything for this place. And amongst the parishioners was a Mr. E. Popkiss, a customs house officer. So we know that they were here and that our ancestors would have walked up these stairs and into this church. And they may have even walked around the church like we're going to now. It's a children's playground area in this bit. There's gravestones over there. But yeah, it's a shame. Uh, I'll have to try and find out the opening times for this one. Because as you know, I do like a church. That's the, uh, would have been the old parish fountain or pump. It's got some lights and stuff up in the trees there, which will look nice when it's dark, I dare say. That takes you down into the crypt, which is probably going to be an interesting structure. I will check online and see when this one opens. Oh, it is open. Probably a Sunday. But, um, it's known as the Sea Captain's Church because we are literally over that wall there is the Thames. But that'll be a little uh, something nice for our uh, on foot tour, which I shall commence with. And look, there's graves and stuff around here, but it's also a community allotment. That much I did know because Carol told me about that. And she did say to me, whatever you do, just don't touch any of the fruit or vegetables. She went, because the, the gentleman that cares for it is very possessive. The way she went, <laughs> I went, oh, I'm a kind of gardener myself. I went, so I know you don't touch them another person's garden stuff without permission but that would get you down into the crypt uh, 
and I think we may make this the little on foot tour for the uh, the Thames because my other on foot tour which I am in the process of doing I've stopped one video because we got as far as the Brunel tunnel the first tunnel to ever be put under the Thames we got as far as that and the next part of that video will be all the information on the tunnel itself and everything so ah ah excellent this is even better or as a perverted German person would say Jawohl We have a gravestone here which is fairly well preserved which I am going to do so this is going to be a bit of a churchyard tour and we're going to enjoy something in a minute Mrs Mary Crawford wife of Mr Christopher Crawford of this parish who died 15th of May 1827 aged 50 years and was interred in the vaults of this church also Henry Brown Crawford son of the above who died off the Western Islands, 1st of March 1833, aged 26 years. Also, John Brown Crawford, son of the above, who died 9th of November 1845, aged 34 years, and was likewise interred in the vaults of this church. Also, Mrs. Jane Dargue, sister of Mr. Christopher Crawford who died 7th of June 1853, aged 80 years. Also, the above-named Mr. Christopher Crawford, who died the 26th of January 1856, aged and at 78 years. Upwards. Ah, oh, it's really annoying. That was going to be saying about of his life as well. That was going to say saying upwards so many years. Could have been church warden, could have been captain, could have been anything. I'll get a photo of that. Then rather. Pardon. And this is where it's going to get nice. So this is going to be our little um, one for this one. And our on foot tour will commence back at the Brunel Tunnel. Oh look. A little blackbird. Oh how charming. And look we can get down here. See the river. Now you see why. Now you know. See why it's called the Sea Captain's Church. There's a lot of sea captains worshipped here, and uh, a lot of the sea captains, when they retired, same as um, St Anne's Limehouse, a lot of the people that were parishioners and buried there and worshipped there were uh, sea captains and whatnot. Because when they retired, they liked to be near the river so they could smell the salt air. Oh, this is absolutely charming, isn't it? This is a docks, obviously, of some kind. Um, oh. Shadwell Dock. Yeah. Not bad, is it? It's a pool of Shadwell. I've got some good content today actually. Does this tell me what or where we are? Outdoor gym. Please help us love our neighbours. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well I do love my neighbours, but just as at it's at a distance. No, they're alright actually. We're very, very fortunate with my neighbours. Very fortunate. We're going to have a little stroll around here and have a, a look-see. Something I spotted out of the corner of my eye. Looks quite interesting. This, in, back in the day, of course, would have been docks and warehouses and things like that. And uh, when the container ships all came along, the docks, the London docks, were rendered redundant, really, because they couldn't cope with container ships and big, big big ships they just couldn't cope with it so that was the end of the docks and they sat idle by for many years even when I was a kid I remember as a little boy the docks being quite empty uh, 
and deserted, especially at the Royal Victoria docks. I remember the old dock buildings actually still being there. They were rebuilds after the Second World War to replace what had been bombed. I don't know if they was two or three stories high red brick, but I do remember them. Well, so, uh, that told all yous, didn't it? But you can see the shard from here, emergency throw line. Shadwell Basin, excellent, there we are. Thank you. Look at the geese. One of them is anyway, I don't know what that other one is, if it's wings out. Is that a real bird? Or is it dead? I do hope it's okay. Oh, it's drinking or something. No, it isn't. Seagulls, Canada geese, moorhens. The little squeaky ones that you can hear are moorhens. Bad view, is it? I don't know why I haven't got my hat on. I'm out of the and away from the church now. Well, there's another church in the distance for me to investigate, which will be for another time because you can only do so much in one day. Oh, look. I think we're going to enjoy this one. The old lock bridge. Look, that's brilliant. I'm glad I walked around this way now. Wait for that young man to go across. There we go. That's it. I think we're going to get a pretty decent view from this as well as seeing an amazing piece of uh, Victorian or Edwardian architecture, wherever it is. There's another one of these bridges a bit further on, I saw it as I came down this way. Oh, look at that. Shadwell Basin we are at at the moment. Now I'm going to cross the road. There's nothing coming at the moment, so... Over here, we're going to get some nice views in a minute. We're getting a pretty nice one now, apart from all the detritus of the uh, boat things, but it's part of London life, isn't it? I love stuff like this. Some decent photos there. Do you guys and girls like things like this too? This is a uh, waiting swing bridge it would be an extraordinary piece of architecture or industrial architecture and engineering isn't it this one you like This walkway will be closed overnight from dusk, no later than 8 p.m. until 6.30 a.m. in the morning. And may the Lord God have mercy upon your soul. Okay. And so I was going to say the other day, but I completely forgot and waylaid myself again. Um, I had quite a bit of free time just after Christmas. And I, dis I discovered that staying in for a prolonged length of time, although my home is absolutely lovely and perfectly happy there, 
and whatnot on that. It's not good for my what I call depression and what people call mental health nowadays. I don't like calling depression mental health. It makes me sound like a lunatic. But there we are. And this is one of these types of areas. I visited one of these before. Where was it? Ah, near um, Isle of Dogs on my way to the Island Gardens, the Greenwich Tunnel and whatnot. Here you get going to get a pretty good view from here and photos so we get a little perambulation around of the Thames and that's the Thames boat cruises they go up and down there's the Uber one there I, I went on one of those and I must admit although I dislike Uber I couldn't fault it I couldn't fault it it would be unfair to do that and I do pertide to try to be a fair man, as Samuel, Pope's, Samuel Peeps would have said. It's going to pause you a sec. That's why I light up a smoke. From the, like from the Thames here, it's ugly crane and whatnot out of the way. You see that church spire, uh, bottom left corner? It may appear bottom right, I'm not sure, because sometimes the... the uh, the weirdness of filming and such like. There it is. And that is St Anne's Limehouse. And we're looking up towards Limehouse Basin and everything. So yeah, you get a pretty good view from here, so we'll do the walk around. St Paul's at Shadwell. I uh, hope you all enjoyed these little walking tours. That's lovely, isn't it? Very nice, very atmospheric. And you can walk around these little ways. Prospect Wolf, 1988. These buildings, I don't know if they were the old dockyard buildings that have been reutilised, but if not, they've done a nice job of making them try and fit in to the area's heritage. Some of the old dockyard buildings near um, Tower Bridge, they have been reused. And like over the water there, you can see the spire of yet another church. I shall zoom in on for you. There we are. Trying to keep as still as a baby lamb in the eye of a fox. While I can take the photos, because if I move, they blur. Um, if there's anything in particular uh, of or in London that you would like to see, guys and girls, let me know. I'm always open to, uh, to new ideas and suggestions. As long as it's not too sordid or I'm not going to get mugged and end up with a cut throat and an empty purse and a ripped up rectal passage, I'm not going to mind. Sorry about that one. Yeah. It's one of my little jokes about dodgy areas. Oh, don't you go around here, mister. You'll end up with a cut throat, an empty purse, and a reptile, reptile passage. That's my slightly dodgy Birmingham accent, but with a smattering of vulgarity added on top. And this, which we won't go down because the tide is coming in, I believe. We can walk down there. That would be a good spot for beach combing, that would. You'd get coins and shark's teeth and bits of old wine bottles from there. Look at that lovely charming view, eh? I 
Now if you could take about say 75% of the majority of the arseholes out of London, because there are a lot of arseholes in London, myself included in that number of course. No, but if you'd like, no, I mean like real horrible arseholes that no, no place wants. You could take them out, it really, really would be a truly lovely place to be. Health before profit, end factory farming now. Yes, that I do agree with. I'll not tell thee a lie. Right. I do not know what is down there, but we're just about to find out. Lovely looking abandoned building there. Even if I do say so myself. This is. Oh, is this the prospect of Whitby? In communion with other local private areas along the Thames and King Edward Memorial Park. It's a, okay. It's been a damn will tell me something useful then. I know the walkway will be closed at night time. I know it won't be closed. Ah, yes. Well, guys and girls, this has turned out to be even better than we thought. This is going to be our next location for today. This is the Prospect of Whitby. It's one of London's most historic pubs. Um, one of the oldest stone floors still left in London. Although the front of it has been changed, this pub's been here since Tudor times. And I can't remember if it was Drake or Raleigh. One of the two of them is said to have come here to the Prospect of Whitby. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to end this one and the next bit of our, well, next thing, location will be the Prospect of Whitby. So join me for that.